Perez was born into an independent East Timor. The family gathers around the table that William's grandfather left behind when he fled the country with his seven children in 1975. They've returned to help realise their father's dream. Amelia Perez is the eldest. She is East Timor's finance minister. Sister Aurora teaches at a Catholic kindergarten. Palmyra runs a not-for-profit job training agency. Alfredo Perez, the birthday boy's father, is East Timor's Secretary of State for Natural Resources. And Fernando works for an international aid agency. Together, they represent what is desperately needed in East Timor, skills and hope for the future. left in 1999, they destroyed almost all the infrastructure. But worse than that, when they left, they took with them the human capacity to run the country. After seven years of independence, East Timor has little to show for it. But a new generation of young leaders has emerged. Many of them have been educated in Melbourne. They're now grappling with the basics of how to run a country. And they've asked one of Australia's most successful political leaders for help. Josephine, how are you? Steve Brax won three elections in the state of Victoria. He's a friend of East Timor Prime Minister Janana Guzmao, who's called on his expertise in running a government and a public service. He's volunteering his assistance. What struck you when you first arrived? Was it a, was it a shock? Well, the enormity of the task. I mean, anyone that arrives in Dili and sees the destruction which occurred, and still the aftermath of that, it's not completely recovered, the destruction that occurred in 99, the torching of buildings, disabling of, of, of roads and pavements and a whole range of issues, it, it's a, it's a long-term project. On the face of it, East Timor is struggling to function as a nation. The basics of a civil society are just not there. No water, poor housing, no decent education and still little security. It's starting from scratch, isn't it? Pretty well. Yeah, starting from scratch. It's like saying in an equivalent state in Australia for about a million people. Your infrastructure's disabled, a lot of able-bodied men have been killed as breadwinners, regrettably, in the fight for independence, and you've lost your senior administrators in all public functions. Off you go and run the country. That's what it's like. And that's the job required. And I think it, it, we should not underestimate that task. It's a big task. East Timor is ranked among the poorest nations in the world. But now it's rich, oil rich, from reserves in the Timor Gap. It has billions in the bank, and there's probably more to come. Now, this is a map showing uh, areas of, of petrol or the uh, blocks of petroleum in Timor Leste. Secretary of State for Natural Resources, Alfredo Perez, is one of the new generation of East Timor leaders. Educated in Melbourne, he and his siblings have returned to rebuild the nation. This government's problems is a problem that I never imagined it could have, spending money properly. It's things like, uh, you know, if I, a window is broken, I, I need over 10 pieces of paper of work in order to get that repaired. This is Manluana Primary School, a 30-minute drive from Dili. It has more than 800 students and just 18 teachers. The government provides only 75 cents a year per student. The buildings are falling apart and there aren't enough chairs for the children. School principal Rosa de Cruz says these books have all been donated by a school in New Zealand. Nova Zelandia. 
Será que fosse porta, for cadernos, for lápis, lapiseira. Será que você ainda mais fora da rua. There's another obstacle to learning for many of these children from the poor rural surrounds. Quite often, they're starving. Rosa de Cruz says her written pleas to the government for funding don't even get replies. This is the government-owned Comoro power station, which is meant to supply Dili with electricity. There are daily blackouts, and this is the reason. The plant's 23-year-old diesel engines are considered obsolete. Some haven't been serviced for five years. Filomeno Maniz de Rego is the acting plant manager. He shows me the equipment used for the daily running repairs, tools from the plant's one toolbox. It's hot and dangerous work, yet they have no protective clothing. Here too, written requests to government for funding remain unanswered. Tell me how rich East Timor is. Well, right now we have about $3 billion in our fund. And oil can also be a curse, as you know. Um, so, uh, right now I'm even reading all these uh, books on, you know, <laughs> resource curse to make sure that we do not fall in the trap. Uh, we need to manage that, uh, uh, our resource properly so that we don't um, follow those other countries that even though they are very rich, but they are poor. What we'll do, we'll have to sit down with them and, and we'll put an action plan... Emilia Perez is the country's finance minister. You sign that document, okay. you send it to Manel. Yeah. She's unforgiving in her dealings with a dysfunctional yeah. public service. Understood. Yeah. But three million dollars balance of what? Oh, yeah. When we first got here, I inherited like ten divisions, quite a few dysfunctional. And the worst part is people not communicating with each other when they have to, so that the services get out of the door. Advisors themselves do not speak to each other, you know, from, from the different division, and then things get stuck. I think what's not widely understood, it wasn't only in 99, the destruction of infrastructure, of buildings, of roads, of power systems. It was also, of course, significant number of skilled and able people who are running organisations were driven out of the country, driven out for fear of retribution against their family. So, you know, people running water authorities and power systems. So getting that expertise back, getting people trained, that doesn't happen overnight. And then this is Another Perez sibling, Palmyra, is trying to teach the basic office skills necessary in any bureaucracy. While Palmyra is teaching those at the bottom of the government hierarchy, um, Steve Brax gives lessons to the top. To Here, to he's addressing sure cabinet know. ministers. No one else, of course, is going to present in a positive light what the government is doing except you. No one else. There's no one else out there to do that. So it's very important that that's done consistently and well. After nine months of work with the East Timorese government, three of Mr Brack's major recommendations have been accepted. The establishment of a civil service commission, an independent Auditor General's office and the setting up of an anti-corruption commission. They were announced by Prime Minister Janana Guzmão. Itahare Katek, a Halok Barak, to the problem in the 
problema é de real do no substancial. East Timor's 62-year-old Prime Minister, Janana Guzmao, has been at the helm during much of the country's tumultuous history. Do you work here too? <laughs> he says he wants to grow pumpkins on retirement, but not yet. First, he says, the public wants to see his promises delivered before they lose patience and perhaps resort to the sort of violence seen too often here. When people come to you and say, I have no running water, no decent school, no power, the roads, you know all the problems, what do you say to them? We have a mandate for five years. Don't ask me to do it one day what we have to do in five years. You know, I have um, a very good team, very young team. I am their, um, we can say their father. Um, very young, very strong, very committed. If we say inexperienced, yes, we are <laughs> in the same way. But um, every day I get uh, I get uh, more confidence on them. They're making some progress on some of the urgent problems. One of them is housing. Tens of thousands of houses were destroyed in the violence of 2006. Since then, up to 100,000 people have been living in cramped, unhygienic camps scattered throughout Dili. In a bid to entice these people to return home, the government is offering a cash incentive, up to $4,500 a family. These hospital grounds were taken over by the refugees who set up camp in 2006. Today, it's being dismantled. Sister Aurora Perez teaches the youngest at this Catholic school. It's only just returning to normal after being inundated by refugees fleeing violence in the nearby hills. If you just imagine, that was just at Easter, Easter this year, we still had, for each month you see, is a, is a tent. So, so it we, was turned into a refugee camp? It, this was turned into a refugee camp. She takes us to the town of Malk, 20 minutes drive away, where those who were living on the school grounds are now rebuilding their lives. Leonetto Guterres shows us the remains of his burnt home, the house he's constructing, and the tent he's living in now. The international presence is still thick on the ground in East Timor. Security forces, voluntary agencies and foreign government projects. This building, for example, was donated by the Chinese. It was the biggest construction in town, but used only imported Chinese labourers. It's the new office of foreign affairs and it boasts Timor's first ever elevators. But no one uses them for fear of being trapped in a power blackout. If the Brax principles of government succeed in East Timor and political stability holds, there is cause for optimism. Back in Australia, the Perez matriarch prepares lunch for the extended family for the expected visit of Amelia. Mum! Yes, Amelia? Oh. Oh. 
How are you? Okay. Okay. But while Amelia lives in East Timor, her heart remains in Melbourne, where her husband Warren resides. Okay. How long have you been married? Yeah. On the 21st of April, we make one year. That's right. And we haven't had our honeymoon. <laughs> I haven't had the time for it. <laughs> How much time have you spent together in that one year? Three weeks. <laughs> About three weeks, I'd say. Something yeah. like that. How are you coping, Warren? <laughs> oh, well, it's not easy, but we hope it won't always be like this. We go back to team. Oh, sorry, I give you. Oh, okay. It has to be a quick lunch. Amelia needs to attend meetings across the globe to discuss East Timor's oil fund investments. From there I go to Kuwait. Yeah. And then from there I go to Dubai. And then I pick a car and go back to Abu Dhabi. And then Bangkok. Wow. And then I go to Bali, Bali, Timor. Stay there for a long time. No, only one day and then I take off again to Washington. And I thought I was busy. <laughs> People we've spoken to refer to you as a future leader. Do you see yourself as a future leader? No. I, I see myself more as a technical person. I, I don't like to be a politician, uh, even though everybody says I am a politician because now I am the Minister of Finance. Yes, the, yes, yeah, we have like one stop. The only ambition I have is to make sure that this country turns around and I want to make sure that we are the next miracle of this region, that's all. The, the top one is my dad, uh, but he's, he's passed away already. Alfredo Manuel Perez died a year before his life's dream of an independent East Timor. I remember my father saying, you have to educate yourself, no matter what. We ended up in Australia with only the clothing in our back. And then we rebuilt our lives from scratch. We made it and we got our education because my father used to say, educate yourself because nobody can take that away from you. And this is what I say to the people here. My father, I would say he would be very proud of his children. He'll be very proud, but he would say, always be aware to do justice for his Timor for the Timorese and not for yourself. Oh, dear.